this video is going to deal with the concept of pH. And you have to understand that as important as pH is, because in particular of how it affects neurofunction and protein shape, it's a concept that people often have difficulty with because it's a simplification of some important numbers. And the simplification creates its own set of challenges. So let's look at how pH is calculated first. pH is calculated as negative 1 times the base 10 logarithm of the concentration of free protons. The only variable here is the concentration of free protons. So we're going to take the base 10 logarithm of that and multiply it by negative 1 to get the pH. So if we look at a table here, if we start with a pH of one, or I'm sorry, a proton concentration of 1 times 10 to the minus 7th molar, which is typical in a pure sample of water, that's going to have a pH of around 7. 1 times 10 to the minus 7th, base 10 logarithm of that times negative 1 gives us a pH of 7. And as I fill in some additional hydrogen ion concentrations on the left and corresponding pHs on the right, you can see the relationship between hydrogen ion concentration and pH. Now, something you need to recognize, those hydrogen ion concentrations represent very small numbers. When we change them to decimals, what I want you to notice is the smaller the pH, the bigger the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, on, the hand, on one hand, we don't want to deal with numbers on the left if we don't have to. The pH numbers are, as numbers, much more convenient, much easier to think about than 0.00000001. Right? It's much easier to think about the pH equivalent of that. At the same time, when pH gets bigger, hydrogen ion concentration is getting smaller. So the simple way in which we calculate pH creates this difference. And the other thing has to do with changes in pH. If the pH goes from 7 to 6, the pH is getting smaller, the hydrogen ion concentration is getting bigger, but if you look at the numbers here, a drop in pH from 7 to 6 represents a hydrogen ion increase of 10. That unit 1 change in pH represented a tenfold change in hydrogen ion concentration. By contrast, when pH goes from 3 to 7, not only is the hydrogen ion concentration getting smaller as pH gets larger, but that's a four-step change in pH, 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7, that represents a 10,000-fold decrease in hydrogen ion concentration. So there's two things you have to understand up front about pH, and I will expect you to know this on tests. First of all, when hydrogen ion concentration falls, pH rises. And when hydrogen concentration rises, pH falls. Acids, which are proton donors, lower pH. Bases, which are proton acceptors, raise pH. And furthermore, small changes in pH represent big changes in hydrogen ion concentration. Every change of a unit of 1 in pH represents a tenfold change in ion concentration. And realize pH is the abstraction in the laboratory that, we're inter that we talk about, but it's the actual ion concentration that's changing. One way to talk about pH is to look at what's called the pH scale, which I'm showing here horizontally, running from a low pH of 0 on the left to a high of 14 on the right. Now we typically use the terms acidic, neutral, and basic or alkalinic to talk about the pH scale. And, and we can do this in chemistry, but biologically, and, and I think, frankly, chemists would agree with this as well, pH is a relative concept. There is no such thing as absolute acid or absolute base. It's all relative to where you start from, and I'm going to make that point separately in a few minutes. But let's just look at this basic way of looking at the pH scale of acid, neutral, and base by putting some common substances of biological interest on here. So here's where lemon juice falls, tomato juice, and coffee, they're all on the more acidic end of things. Milk of magnesia and lye are on the alkalinic or basic end of things. Now, if we add some human fluids or human substances, gastric juice is very acidic. Vaginal fluid is slightly acidic. Urine can be anywhere from slightly acidic to reasonably basic. Bile is reasonably basic, as is pancreatic juice. Blood and semen are slightly on the basic side of neutral. But here's the thing again. It's all relative to where you start from. Notice blood's shown here as a fairly narrow range, 
And if you're at all familiar with pH in blood, you've heard of blood disorders called acidosis and alkalosis, in which a person's blood becomes either too acidic or too basic, and dangerously so. Consider some numbers. If a person's plasma pH, their blood pH, drops from 7.4, which is smack in the middle of what we would call the normal range for blood pH, to a pH of 7.3, which is outside the normal range of blood plasma pH, you've experienced in there a 30% increase in hydrogen ion concentration. On top of that, while a pH of 7.3 might be to an absolute pH scale slightly basic to neutral, if we're talking about human blood, 7.3 is neither basic nor neutral. It's lethally acidic. So keep in mind a few things about pH in this take home. One, an increase in pH is a decrease in hydrogen ion concentration and a decrease in pH is an increase in hydrogen ion concentration. Each change of 1x in pH represents a 10x change in hydrogen ion concentration, and these are multiplicative. So if pH changes three steps, that's 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000 fold change. In terms of acidic and basic, these are relative concepts. Substances become acidic when pH decreases. Substances become alkalinic when pH increases, regardless of where they start.